Welcome. Thank you for joining me and glad you've uh, invented through this. Our goal here is to go through 11.7c for, and our objective is how do I find the surface area and cones. And I hope this is helpful to you. As you know, we have gone through and found the vol. We know how to find volumes of prisms and cylinders and also pyramids and cones. And then the last thing we did uh, before this was to look at the surface area. Uh, so we have the very last thing now is surface area of pyramids and cones. And the, it's very similar, prisms and cylinders. Uh, the only difference is that there's only one base and the lateral area there are some tweaks uh, on that and so we'll we'll show that to you in just a minute here so let's remind ourselves that a pyramid is a polyhedron poly is many hedron sides so many sides um, in which one face can be any polygon and the other faces are triangles the apex so you will remember that for a pyramid it has to have an apex and that apex has to be surrounded by triangle sides otherwise it's not a, uh, a pyramid and a regular pyramid is a pyramid whose base is a regular polyvars will be regular polygons for the bases and whose lateral faces are congruent isosceles the slant height that is a number is the length of the altitude remember the altitude is a set as a shape but the slant height is a number the length of the altitude and that altitude is uh, one of the um, of one of the lateral faces so let's think about that because this is really important concept for us so here is that the height of the pyramid going from the apex and going down the perpendicular down to the base. So this segment here um, is an altitude. It's the altitude of the pyramid. But when we altitude here, we are referring to the altitude of one of the uh, triangles, um, triangular faces, uh, lateral face here. So alongside the outside of a uh, pyramid side, uh, this is a uh, altitude, and the length of that altitude is the slant height. Let me figure. Hopefully this will come through on the video okay. So the height of the prism goes from the apex and is the perpendicular distance uh, down to the base. Whereas the slant height is... Uh, on the outside here, it's kind of, it's sl as you can see, it's not down down the middle. Let's put it this way, maybe easier for you. It's not down the middle, but it's a slanted along the side uh, there, and it is the altitude of the one of these triangular faces, lateral faces uh, of the the pyramid. It is important for us because you remember that the way that we think of finding the surface area for any of these uh, polyhedrons uh, is <clears throat> to, and when we draw <clears throat> a net for uh, the pyramid, we always start out, as you remember, always start out with a rectangle, but we are rectangle. When we did a, a prism, you'll remember that the sides of a prism are rectangles. So those are rectangles. We want that entire uh, rectangle but since the sides of a uh, pyramid are actually triangles therefore we want just triangles there and so that's why you'll see that the lateral area is equal to one half not the whole thing but one half the perimeter of the base slant height so the perimeter of the base is this distance uh, here the length of this uh, rectangle and you'll remember that we say the perimeter of the base because uh, I find this length that's in a curve in this particular orientation. Uh, the length of this this uh, um, curve is the length of the distance around the base, the perimeter. 
and I've represented that here by the dark black marker. So this length of the, the lateral surface is the same as the perimeter. And then the height of this, um, this uh, lateral triangle, or not a triangle, but lateral uh, rectangle, uh, is the slant height. Because again, what we're doing <coughs> are taking this uh, side uh, length here, and as if I was to cut this and lay it all spread out here, and the height of this rectangle is an altitude of one of the triangles on the lateral face. So I want this this uh, altitude, and you have that altitude is your slant height of the the polygon or of the the pyramid. It is not the the height of the the pyramid. Okay, so that uh, italic cell that refer to height. And that's about it. We've just have gone through everything. So you remember that uh, uh, surface area equals lateral area plus one. There's only one base on this uh, pyramid. So again, referencing your uh, formula sheet, surface area equals lateral area plus, and that's for pyramid, and we will use the same equation when we get to, to cones. Let me show you a specific example. Remember again, this is not in your book. This section is from an old, and they give us this pyramid here, and um, has all kind of measurements on it. We have the, the length of a side is six inches. They give us some of the the polygon. Uh, the base is three square to three. And then this distance here, this length is your slant height because it is a uh, altitude of, of one of the sides of the pyramid. So we want to find the surface area of this pyramid. So let me take this image, this uh, three-dimensional drawing, and draw it for you. Uh, so remember, you always start out with a rectangular uh, shape for your lateral area. And because this is a pyramid, it only has one base. And because all the uh, lateral sides come to a one, one vertex, and the sides are all angles, uh, therefore, make sure that you draw in triangles. Uh, we need to make sure when we do this problem that we draw in triangles. So we only want half of this uh, rectangular area. And that this height here of your rectangle is your lateral, your slant, sorry, your slant height. So we start, we use our basic formula. Uh, for surface area uh, is lateral area plus 1b. There's only one base uh, here, so for cones and for pyramids, uh, it's 1b. And this lateral area, to find area, it's 1 half because I have triangles in here. p is your perimeter, and what I mean by that is this, this length here is the same as the perimeter around the base uh, times the slant height. And the slant height they told us was 9 and the perimeter. We get that from, they tell us that one of the sides of the base is six inches and there are six sides. This is a hexagon, so the perimeter is six times six, which is 36. And I'm just noticing I goofed up on this. I forgot I have the uh, 36 for the perimeter, but I do not have the uh, slant height for that. Good thing I double checked this. Should have double checked it before I did the, the video with you. <clears throat> and so the slant height is the perimeter and times one half. And then now we also need to include the area of the base. And this is a, a hexagon, a regular, poly, a poly, uh, yeah, regular polygon. And you remember that the equation for the area of a regular polygon is one half the apothem times the perimeter. So this is the perimeter around the base that we will use over here. And so it's one half. They told us the apothem was three square root of three. 
and our perimeter like we calculated is 36 so when we multiply all of this then we get this number and I kinda cheated that number from the book so I did not catch my error so I know the answer is right <laughs> even though I forgot the uh, the 9 on there okay you are ready now to that you have here in your notes let me help you out with that see it says a square pyramid so square remember that identifies the shape of the base that's why I have a square down here for the base pyramid has base edges of five meters so each of these edges on the square are five meters and a slant height of three meters so I draw my right and this the height of this rectangle is the slant height and that is uh, three meters and so you also please uh, draw this uh, same shape that I have uh, here and figure out the sum that of course you will use surface area equals lateral area lateral area is your perimeter this green which you know you would add up these uh, uh, length of sides here 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 so 20 for your perimeter uh, times your slant height uh, which is 30 so even so we know that this whole thing it would be 60 but uh, we want only half of that make sure that you uh, multiply that you use this equation for lateral area one half perimeter times uh, slant height and then you also want to add uh, to that the area of the base which is uh, 25 let me give you help if you want to pause the video that's fine pause the video and uh, do number 1a there that's fine and then let me also give you some hints on uh, this problem uh, what is the lateral area of the hexagonal pyramid at the right and then round to the nearest square foot so here they give me this uh, this uh, three-dimensional uh, pyramid and when I draw my net I always start out with a rectangle and I have one base so I kind of draw my it's supposed to be a regular hexagon or uh, yeah hexagon but uh, it's kind of goofy mine is but that's fine we don't really use the exam uh, but they do tell me that uh, one of the sides is 36 so I label that as 36 and I also know that this is a pyramid to so an apex so all these sides around here are triangles therefore draw in some triangles there it doesn't have to be exact at all but draw some triangles to remind myself that I only need half of uh, this area and then I need to decide it's going to be my slant height but as I look on my diagram here I'm having difficulty finding the slant height they give me the radius of the hexagon uh, which is the base they give me the the height of the which is 42 but I want the slant height and the slant height is going to run from the apex uh, down to the middle of uh, one of these uh, sides so this is an altitude of this triangular side so how do I figure out what the slant height is well I do a little bit of trigonometry see this uh, triangle here and I've just taken that triangle and brought it down underneath here you'll see the 42 is the height of your prism and uh, uh, height of the pyramid and then uh, this radius actually it's a potham in it this apothem uh, here square root of three and I need to find my slant height so I have a right triangle I know two of the sides and I need to find the third side and the easiest way to do that and really the only way that we that we know of to do it is to use the Pythagorean theorem squared plus b squared equals c squared and you remember that the C is always your hypotenuse which is across from your uh, right angle and so make sure you put in for uh, C you put in your slant height and then you can solve uh, for your uh, slant height once you have the slant height then you can plug it in here and you would do your uh, surface area equals lateral area plus the area of the base Go ahead and pause the video and uh, do question please now we're on the back of these notes and we want the lateral area 
and overall the surface area of a cone. Same principle, principle as we have done. Let's first look at this diagram here. This is the height of the cone. That's the altitude of the cone. But we want the uh, slant height of what height uh, of the cone, which is also the altitude of the side. I wouldn't really say altitude, would you? No, you would not say altitude of the side because um, there are there are no tri no actual uh, triangles. You can see here on my my three-dimensional shape that we've estimated a a cone by creating little triangles there, and so we are looking for an altitude. Uh, of one of these small triangles and the slant of that uh, altitude here. But since it really is a cone in actuality, uh, we do not use the term altitude on the side like we did over here. That's interesting. They use altitude only for the altitude of the prism, and that's fine. I like that. So. But here they said the slant height is the length of the altitude lateral faces. So that might be a little bit confusing because it's an altitude not of the, the prism or of the pyramid, but it's an altitude of, as it says, uh, one is uh, lateral faces, which is a triangular. Okay, so I'm just getting cl more clear in, in my own mind on that. I know I explained it well and I explained it uh, accurately before. I just wanted to, with. Uh, what they're saying uh, here. So lateral area, I'm oh, sorry, let's start here. Uh, surface area for a cone is lateral area plus base. So that's the same as we use for, uh, and in this case, the uh, the base is a circle. So that's pretty simple. We know that's gonna be uh, pi r squared is the equation for the area of a circle. Uh, lateral area is one, we use the same formula that we did on the, on the front for a pyramid, one half perimeter times uh, slant height, and that perimeter is the around the the base. And circumference, as you remember, is uh, two pi r. And so that we just plug that in then for the uh, the perimeter. So let me give you and jump right into uh, the the two ones that you have, and let me help you out uh, with those for the sake of sake of time here. The, uh, it tells us the radius of the base is a cone of a cone is uh, 16 meters. So my uh, base is a circle and the radius, whoa, what happened? I put uh, 28. <laughs> Error number two. So let's put uh, 16 there. So the radius of the base of a cone is 16 meters. Yep, I got that now, 18 meters and its slant height is 28 meters and they're asking us to find the surface area in terms of pi. So I always start out with mole and I have one base in this cone and because the cone is coming to an apex uh, I can think of it as these infinitesimally small little triangles uh, there kind of like I have here these little small triangles and it uh, doesn't matter how many you have, it's just reminding us that I do not want all of this rectangle. I only want, I only want half of that rectangle. That's why we have the one half uh, here. And the height of so rectangle uh, is the slant height, which they told us is uh, 28. So you will use your formula, surface area equals lateral area, which is the circumference times the slant height plus the area of the base, and the area of the base is pi r squared, and for all 16. So go ahead and pause the video and you can find, so solve that problem. And then, now, um, as a side note, I just noticed that this uh, says number three. I guess that kind of matches. Yeah, it does match the two here, so that's fine. Um, but with number four, uh, A, I, I did not include uh, part B. And the same thing on the front of the page, not include parts uh, B with these, these two, if that happened to catch your attention and trouble you. So number four, uh, what is the lateral area of a traffic cone with radius 10 inches? So I have my radius correct here of 10 inches and a height of 28 inches. 
and now here they're saying height. Whoa, catch that. If they're not saying slant height, they're just saying height. So let's do the same thing we've done before. Rectangular uh, lateral area, triangles, we want half of that uh, uh, rectangle. And now the question is, how do I find the slant height? How do I find this height here? Well, um, remember what the height of the cone is. Here is your cone. So the height of the cone is on the inside and it is the perpendicular distance going down from the apex down to the, the base. The slant height is actually this one uh, height over here. Okay, so what they, they give us the slant height. They also give us the radius, don't they? Going from the center of the, the circle out here to the radius. So I can uh, create a triangle then. And as you see here on your the diagram, uh, I can create this uh, this triangle. They they give me the height of the cone. They also give me the radius.